Okay, folks, so for the last installment, looking at how we can design our content to um, be, well, I'm going to say responsive to um, the needs and context of the user, um, we are going to look at um, creating content that sort of essentially uh, selects itself or is visible or inbuilt based on the size of the window um, uh, or potentially the device. And so, again, what we're looking at right here is, a, is a, what we call a responsive version. Um, where basically it, it scales or collapses based on the size of the screen. But again, particularly when it comes to visualization, you know, this has rollovers. We might want to look at, say, a smaller time frame. We might want to not have rollovers. We might want to have some content visible over here, for example, um, when you're on a mobile device that will help frame the visualization and, 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 the, um, and the information for the reader in a way that makes the most sense based on how they're viewing it. Um, so. Uh, one way that we can do this, we can do this also with Bootstrap, and um, I'm actually just going to, um, I'm going to get rid of this for now, um, and show an example of uh, what, of how we can use it. it has a sort of a visibility property. Uh, so if I come back to my CSS documentation, uh, it has something called responsive utilities. So the issue is that um, when we um, is that we can use these these uh, sort of visible or not visible uh, things as a way to control um, what, for example, like what, what content appears in which cases. So I'm just going to do this in a very, very simple way. Um, and that is, to, that is to just take, a, create a row of content. And I'm basically going to say that one piece of content should be hidden but I'm basically going to say that, that each section should be hidden in two out of three cases, right? So if I have small, medium, and large, then I want to say, you know, uh, hide this in all cases but small. Uh, we'll see how this works in a second. So, of course, I have to start with my div class equals row because we're still making a row of content. And I can say, so I'm going to say div class. Now, this is a good um, sort of example of... Uh, I can add more than one class to something. So what I'm, and, and there's, we can either revert the, define this in the positive or the negative. To me, it makes a little bit more sense for whatever reason to define it in the negative for me. Um, that's gonna depend on your personal approach. Um, but basically, I'm gonna come back here, and if I see here, so if I can say, look, I want this to be, um, if I say hidden on small devices or hidden on medium and large devices, then what does that mean? It means that that content will be visible on small and extra small devices. So again, it's like a little, uh, a little backwards maybe, but basically if we think of ourselves as having kind of three or four options, I can say, okay, the small content I want to be hidden on medium and hidden on large, right? And if you see, there's a space between here. So when I have multiple classes, CSS classes, they are separated by a space, not a comma. So I realize that that is a diversion uh, or is divergent from the way that we have, that we will be seen in things like JavaScript. So it's something to keep an eye out for. So now on my medium content, right, I want my medium content to be hidden when it's small or large. And I want my large content to be uh, hidden when it's small or medium. Okay. So I basically just said, oops, and I want to change this to large just so I can see, right? So now when I reload my page, what I ought to see is one of these three, okay? So apparently the size that I'm at right now is what Bootstrap considers to be a medium display width, right? And if I, as I scale here, you can see that there was a point, if you keep an eye on that, right, where it's switched to small. So this is the small, uh, now in this case, I failed to say whether these things should be visible or invisible um, at quote unquote extra small. So I probably want to add another one here and say I can add a fourth, which is my extra small. And again, I don't necessarily, like if small and extra small both, if it's the same thing to be seen at small and extra small, then I would just want to, um, then I could just leave that and that's okay that that's still showing at quote unquote extra small. Um, but I want to make sure that I add extra small to my medium and large so they don't show up again all of a sudden um, when it gets to uh, when it gets to extra small. So let's try this again. I'll do a little reload here. So now 
actually to make this clear for myself, small and extra small. All right, so I'm reminding myself, okay, this is the content that I've designated to show and it's small and extra small. Uh, if somebody's viewing it on a tablet, perhaps, it's gonna switch over to medium, that's good. So going off the end here, and now they're gonna see whatever is on the large. So you can hopefully start to imagine how by defining these different divs, right, I might actually design multiple visualizations for for each of my for multiple versions of each visualization that I've sort of you know thought about. Okay, on the medium and large, this makes sense because somebody's maybe on a tablet or they're on a smaller computer screen. This is what I'd like to show. Again, we see with maps and things like this, this can be very important. And then look, if somebody is on a smaller, extra small device, um, you know, a phone or a smaller tablet, then I want to make sure they see this this more limited version of it. Maybe that's not interactive. And again, that might mean also um, that that uh, you know different annotations pop up, right? So if someone is looking at a more zoom, you know, sort of a narrower uh, segment of the information because they're on a smaller device, maybe there's an extra block of text that appears in that case explaining some of the context that's been lost by having the smaller version of the, the or the sort of um, more heavily edited version of the visualization. So these are two different ways that we can look, so these are two different ways to look at how we handle doing responsive content for different devices. And um, this, is a, this is an element of your final project. So um, as you all are designing your visualizations, we're going to expect that you consider how they should be best represented, at the very least in sort of a medium and large vaguely desktop idea and in a small and extra small sort of tablet mobile idea. And um, and so uh, you may well find that, you know, if you have very simple visualizations, it might not be an issue, but really you should be considering, you know, what does it mean for somebody to be getting this on mobile? How does that change what information they need to see or how they might interact with this a desktop? Because there's one thing we know these days, actually most people are going to be looking, on it at mo uh, looking at it on a mobile device. Um, and so that is not something that can really sort of take a uh, second but at the same time, if someone is on a desktop um, or a laptop, you want to be able to you know, you know, leverage the capacities of that medium as well. Um, so that is it for this week in terms of uh, uh, programming tasks. Um, and uh, next week you'll be looking at maps with Joanna. Um, but uh, look forward to seeing you all later today.